underwriting deals is such a major pain point for people. Most don't want to do it, and the people that are good at it are few and far between. That is why after six years of being in the industry and buying over 1,200 apartments using my best-selling multifamily deal analyzer, I created Real Estate Lab, a full suite acquisition software for multifamily investors. We have built a product that helps investors automate their acquisitions and close more deals all in a cloud-based platform. You can go to realestatelab.com and sign up today using the promo code TAG2 for 10% off your first 12 months. This is David Tupin. Thanks for listening. Welcome to The Apartment Gurus, where twice a week, host Tate Seymour brings you deep dive interviews with the wisest gurus in the apartment investing industry. These experts are sure to create game-changing value and inspiration designed to catapult your business to the next level. Be sure to reach out to Tate at www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. And now, here is Tate Seymour and the Apartment Gurus. Welcome everybody back. Another episode of the Apartment Gurus is coming at you right now. So excited that you joined us today. We're doing two of these a week right now. So we're really cranking out as much value as we can uh, to you guys, the listeners, and really trying to help elevate your game and uh, your business. So uh, today we have a, a, a guru on the show that we're really excited about. Uh, Jenny Gu is, is, has joined us. And uh, Jenny is, is a managing partner at Vertical Street Ventures, or VSV, uh, which was established to help individuals achieve their financial goals through passive investing in real estate. Uh, as one of the founders, she currently oversees the asset management aspects of their business and focuses on business strategy and execution of the business plan, as well as managing relationships and communications uh, with investors. And prior to that, she worked for Procter & Gamble from uh, the, the veritable city of Cincinnati, Ohio, which is hometown of yours truly here. Um, and uh, she worked on for 13 years on brands like Don, Cascade, Swiffer. And then uh, she also had uh, cross-functional teams on top accounts like Costco, Walmart, Target. I'm sure you guys have heard of a few of those stores and brands and her overall experience in leading teams, strategy and project management enables uh, Vertical Street to, Ventures to be the best in the, in the industry and uh, makes their commu their communities a better place to live. So Jenny, I'm really excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here and welcome. Wow, thanks for having me here, Tate. Such an honor. Yeah, it's it's an honor to have you. So Jenny, if you would just for me and for the listeners uh share a little bit about your a little bit more about your background and your uh, your path to where you are uh, today, and then we'll talk a little bit more in depth about what you do and how you do it. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, just to expand a little bit more on, on what Tate shared on my background. So started working for PNG right out of college. In fact, I interned with them. I worked for them since I was eighteen. That's that's how far back I've been with the company. It's yeah, a fabulous wow. place. Yeah. I learned a ton, um, but you know, I also met my husband there, so I have that to thank them for. But uh, when we were living in Cincinnati, Ronnie and I, you know, working for the same company, we had all of our retirement tied into one company um, with our stocks and our profit sharing. And you know what they say, you know, you want to diversify, and right. so that's when we started to learn about real estate, and we picked up our first uh, single family home there for a traditional long term rental. Was this in Cincinnati? In Cincinnati, you got yep, it. Yep. And then plus nine more later. So now we have 10. Mm. We we had this light wow. bulb that said we had to do this faster, bigger somehow. And so then we started learning about multifamily. Mm -hmm. And that was back in, we started investing back in 2017. So fast forward, you know, almost two years later, we said, you know what? We're, we're moving back to SoCal where we have a lot of family let me try to learn more and dig into this multifamily space. And then fast forward again, a couple extra months, February, 2020, I quit my job at p wow. cool. before, before even buying a single door of uh, an apartment complex, which is a little bit backwards. Um, but from then on, we just have exploded since then. 
how did you when you say it was a little bit backwards um how did you how did you justify that or what was your thinking process through that transition where you kind of jumped ship you took a big leap of faith it sounds like uh and, and you know jumped into the the real estate commercial real estate world full time um how how did that all go for you well, uh, I call it backwards because typically, you know, you want to establish the new industry that you're, you know, before you jump ship, you want to yeah. make sure something's planned out and established. And I say it's backwards um, it, only because I believed in the model of multifamily syndication so much that I knew I had to dedicate 100% of my time yeah. to it in order for it to expand. Now, the financial background of that also is because of our 10 single families generating enough passive income for us, it allowed me to be financially stable to replace some of my W-2 income, but then also yeah. have Ronnie still work his full-time job oh, as, so, as so a you, backup. You yeah. leveraged <laughs> Ronnie. I see how it went. You know, someone had to stay behind <laughs> and uh, I shouldn't stay behind. I shouldn't say that. Yeah. Just be, be the stability um, while I figured out this whole multifamily space. And is Ronnie now part of Vertical Street? You bet. He yeah. actually left last October mm -hmm. as well and retired from his corporate career there and has joined us since then. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. And, you know, even though you had the single families producing income and even though you had Ronnie with the stability still, you still burnt the ships, man. That's like, yeah. I mean, you, 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 you know, for listeners, there's the analogy of, burning the ships on the beach, which commits you to being where you are and you can't leave. Like, you know, you're done. Like you got what you got. And you really did that. You, you committed a hundred percent. And I would fully agree with you that if you're going to do this game at a high level, it does require 100% of your time, focus, energy, and efforts, professionally speaking. Um, you know, for me, I'm a single guy with no kids and, and, it it has allowed me to really kind of almost be obsessive about this business at times uh, in terms of hours that I work and trips that I take and whatnot. So um, I think that that it sounds like your commitment, your, your willingness to jump fully uh, was probably a pretty big catalyst in, in the success of your company. I mean, you've only, you did that in 2017, did you say? Or 20, started, 2019. Well, we started investing in 2017. I, I left corporate America in February of 2020, right when COVID was shutting everything down. So that's yeah. a whole nother story. But yeah, right. that's when I decided to leave. So when did you guys buy your first apartment asset? It took us um, a little bit longer than I thought because things slowed down during COVID, um, yeah. the initial onset of it. We purchased our first syndication in, we closed it on December, in December, um, actually two deals on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And then we also pulled in um, some passive deals as well to add to their portfolio. Gotcha. So you did, you're, you're an LP on a few deals and you're, mm -hmm. you're a general partner on your other deals. Correct. Talk about that first gen, or it sounds like you closed two at the same time. What were those, what are those deals like? Talk, talk a little bit about them. Yeah, so um, they're very different. One is a 28 unit um, smaller complex in Glendale, Arizona. Yeah. That one, um, we so I co partnered with other folks. So that one, I had three other co partners as the lead sponsor. We kept it as a small friends and family syndication 506B deal. Um, yeah. That one closed uh, pretty pretty smoothly. Um, the other deal, we partnered with another uh, a partner of ours. His name is Kyle Mitchell, who's now part of the VSV team and family as well. He um, This one was 176 unit in Tucson, Arizona, yeah. um, where I went to school. So I'm very familiar with that area. And um, that one we actually sold for a 3X multiple in less wow. than 20. Um, wow, so nice. Just, uh, everybody on that project for that one. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, so I, I, I know Kyle, um, he was actually supposed to be a guest on the show last night and I had to not be there because of a, a important call I was on with an investor. Um, unfortunately, so 
uh, Kyle, if you're, if you're listening, apologies to you, sir. Um, but uh, you know, I know he's, he's a high, highly, highly, uh, professional, just pro at, at, you know, at this, at this business and is widely respected. He he wrote a book, didn't he? Yes. It's called best in class. So it's one of the only asset management book out there in the industry. And it's, it's, it's a great read. Yeah, I know. And he does, uh, or in the past, I believe he's put on even conferences around specifically asset management. Is that, is that true? Like, yes, he's done, yeah. I think, two virtual conferences all about um, asset management, which is the crux of the business plan. So it's critical. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's dig in right there. So this asset management piece, let me tell you, listeners, this is huge. And if you're part of our listener base that's working on getting your first deal done, the amount of lift that it takes to get that first deal done between finding the deal, writing the offer, negotiating, getting under PSA, get you know do, due diligence, raising the capital, doing all the things that it takes to get to the finish line can feel like a exhausting, gargantuan effort. And it, and it is uh, often. So here, but here's the secret that very few people talk about is that's where things just get started in this business because you need to have an asset management plan and an, and an asset management systems and processes that's going to allow you to implement the business plan that you've written for the property in a very effective profitable way and you got to get this piece right like you got to get the asset management piece right and and typically just you know basics here Asset management refers to usually the operators like Jenny managing the property managers, right? So you've got property management that's day-to-day management and that they handle collecting rents. They handle uh, a lot of times paying bills. They, they handle dealing with tenants and toilets and trash. And you're, you've essentially leveraged that property management company but it, number one, if you either pick the wrong property management company that doesn't do a good job, no matter what you do, or if you've got a property management company that it's not going to perform unless you manage them effectively, uh, you need to be very, very much on top of that. Even if you do have a great property management company, like you know, we're we're fortunate enough now to have fantastic third party managers. You got to get this piece right where you are managing the manager. And, you know, like our team, we do, we have a KPI uh, form uh, spreadsheet that our property manager fills out every week so that we are right on top of all of our stats and metrics. Um, but I'm, I'm really grateful to have a chance to hear from you, Jenny, um, about you know about this piece because it, and it's big, right? It's it's kind of like either it's kind of like talking about finding deals or finding investment money. Like asset management is is a big piece, and uh, there's a lot to it. So let's just start with um, first of all, do you like asset management? I love it. It's yeah. uh, you know <laughs> we we try to put people in the right roles that are. Yeah. They're good at the job and they enjoy it. So yeah. when you combine them, it's really magical. So yeah, yeah, I actually really do enjoy asset management. Yeah, yeah. And this is so key to have somebody on your team that that does enjoy it because it can be fun, um, it, especially if you're working with a great property management team and, you, and you've got a successful business plan in place. When you're, when you're rolling, it can be fun. But man, when you're up against it and you've got a property manager that's not performing and you may need to fire them and, and like facilitate the transition to the next PM. It like, it can also be a lot of work and, 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 and very stressful. So we've got, uh, both, both of my partners, Carl and Chelsea are, are fantastic at, at asset management. They're very detail oriented. Uh, Chelsea's a visionary. She's a designer. So she really has a, a strong, uh, focus on aesthetics uh, when it comes to our assets. But first of all, I'm assuming that you guys, so let's back up. You're based in Southern California. One of your uh, assets is in uh, Glendale, Arizona, Phoenix, the Phoenix market. Um, is that your primary market? Yeah. So we have about 300 million under asset 
um, assets oh, wow. under management That's great. today. Most of our portfolio, all but one, is in Arizona, Phoenix and Tucson. We expanded into the DFW area last November. So we have one property in Arlington. Okay. Okay. And, you know, how to, to just reiterate your point, asset management is so important to really the success of the entire project and how we've structured it. You know, Kyle and I actually tag team a lot of the asset management, and we have a full time asset manager that we've hired. Um, last year. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, some people might say, wow, that's so duplicative. (laughs) But right now, how we've structured it, it works because there's so much that goes on and having more than one opinion and thought, uh, especially in today's climate of, of all the changes happening with expenses on the rise, things, labor shortage, like there's so many moving parts. Yeah. That our team is structured in a way that we can actually have tons of moving ideas and opinions that could, so that we can make the best decision for any one of our properties. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant. Uh, we tag team as well. I'm on all the asset management meetings and, and uh, it, it, you're right. It's, it is fantastic to have uh, more than uh, pair, one pair of eyes and ears and everything mm-hmm. else. Uh, your thinking cap on the project. Um, so, and then are, are, are most of your projects, are they value add projects? Are they, uh, are they rent growth plays? Like what, what kind of strategy do you have in place for them? Yep. That's our, our core business strategy is to focus on value add traditional multifamilies, B class, yep. B minus class. Um, however, we have started to also venture out into development. Yep. Do um, Kyle and one of our other partners, uh, we partner with Jerome. Maldonado, he is in development. Um, and so they're working on a project to convert an office into multifamily. So that's in the works right now. Mm-hmm. And then we're also working on a piece of land in Arizona to that is currently zoned for high density. And we're working with the city on creating a, a new apartment complex there as well. So okay. um, venturing into new, new areas. Um, I shouldn't say new in terms of experience because we have partners that are are very experienced in development, uh, but new in terms of expanding our portfolio outside of just traditional multifamily value add. Yeah, got it. Okay. So for listeners, like a lot of you are going to end up or are are already investing out of state like Jenny is and like, like I do at Greenlight, like my team does. And getting that the selection right on the property manager and getting that piece in place that is powerful for you is I would go as far as to say everything in this game. It is 100% where the rubber meets the road. So, you know, because if you're, if you're, if you've got a great business plan and a great asset that's ready to go, but you don't have somebody that that, that's a, a pro that's pulling the strings and making things happen, it's you might as well not even have the business plan to begin with. Um, and we know that we went through some painful stuff in our portfolio in Oklahoma city early on with, with a bad property manager that we ended up having to fire, um, and make a transition to a great new property manager. But, uh, we, you know, we paid the price. We probably lost six months or so of time and, um, and, and in our business plan, um, and we've learned a lot and we've got a new systems and processes that I'll share with you here in a second, but I want, I'd like to hear from you, Jenny, like, how do you make sure that you're, I'm sure you obviously use third-party management groups. How, how do you make sure that you're selecting the, the right one for the property? Yeah. It's, um, and you're running a business essentially yeah. running an apartment is basically running a business. You have a group yeah. and L you manage people, you, you know, have all these things, systems and processes. So, um, you know, just like any other industry, you know, you have to interview and find the right property management company because we, we've had to fire as well. And it's, it's painful, it's necessary, but that's the best for the investor in the property. Right. Um, there's, you know, we've been through a couple and we, we, we work with a few right now and we like them just to make sure everyone's clear. There's no perfect property management company, That's right? right? There's always going to be something that doesn't work or something that isn't reported right or errors there, or, you know, this and that. So there's set that expectation. There's no perfect one, unless you develop one yourself that you can design and do everything that you want. Um, but you got to interview the right property management 
tour with them. So one, we just transitioned to a new property management on one of our Texas, the Texas property we have. And I interviewed three of three new companies and it was very clear. You just know who is going to be the best one based on Mm -hmm. how they interact with you. One of my big things is one of them asked to meet me on site on the property to walk it with them so that we can start discussing what that looks like. They're walking in, they picked up trash. It's not even their property and they're picking up trash. Like those little details stand out and you can instantly tell just from first and second impressions, whether or not they're a good fit for Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then my other big thing is ask for references. Yeah. So give me the name of an owner who I can talk to so I can call them and just ask them how their experience with that team is. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. It's really cool that you've got, um, you know, you, you now have good property management in place. Um, and I mean, that's a blessing, right? Like when you have that, uh, it's, and and you, you manage them well, like it's hard to go wrong. Awesome. So, you know, we just, my buddy, David, do you know, David Tupin? He, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's a buddy of mine. And, um, I, I think highly of him. He has uh, what he calls an asset management plan. And basically what it is, is it's it's a very detailed document that uh, it, it's almost the way he designs. It's like a brochure. It's got pictures and graphs and targets and all that stuff on it. And it's basically a very, very detailed plan on how things are going to go from day one, and what the expectations are and what the metrics are and vacancies and how turnover rates and all that stuff. And, uh, he has, he has it printed out and he has everybody that is involved in managing the property, sign it. And he has his whole company sign it. And so that everybody's all on the same page and everybody's all in agreement, mm. uh, what their objectives are. I thought, I think that's just absolutely brilliant. We, we I love are, that. yeah, we're going to, um, be implementing that on our next project. And, uh, Jenny, if you want listeners, if you want, for that matter, I can share with you uh, an example of an asset management plan uh, and what that looks like so that you can kind of have a template almost. Um, but like what better way to set expectation levels right. than than to put it on paper and have everybody sign it? Right. I mean, it's accountability. Absolutely. I love that yeah. idea. Yeah. Please do share. I sure will. Yeah. I'll ma- let me make a quick note. Um, yeah, AMP, asset management plan. Most of your assets are are in the class B range. It sounds like B plus, um, that sort of thing. Do you find that? How do you find that tenant class uh, as far as uh, managing g- goes? Uh, how how easy are they to manage? What are the challenges? Yeah, and it's that's it literally varies by neighborhood. Because mm-hmm. a class B property on one side of town, and I and we have both of those examples. The first one, for example, that 28 unit in Glendale, that yeah. tenant base loves the property. They treat it as if it's their own single family home. It is always clean. The grounds are always nice. The residents just love that community yeah. and they live there forever. Um, so no issue. The collections near 100% every single month. Um, you know, a class B in the other side of town could be in a little bit of a rougher area because just like I'm sure in Utah as well, every street in Phoenix could literally make a difference on income level and demographic. So it's, yeah. it's hard to say and pinpoint exactly a, a consensus of a neighborhood, but on another property, it's a little bit harder and collection there's, you know, half the tenants might be late every single month. They might pay it. They they will pay at the end of the month, but they're always consistently late um, because they're paying. They're getting paid every other week, right? So everyone's in a different situation. You know what we try to do. You know evictions are always the last resort. We never ever want to get to that point unless there's a, a true need. We always want to help our residents find help, assistance, a payment plan because we know we're all humans and everyone has a hard day or a hard week, right? Or get sick or what have you. So um, it's a very long winded answer to say it depends. (laughs) The class B tenant, it just varies, but overall they are strong, 
hardworking blue collar folks who at the end of the day, as long as you have a safe, clean environment for them to live in, will do everything in their power to, you know, make sure they make rent and are on time. What what have you found the biggest challenges with that group to be? Um, I think the the late and the the, yeah. the lateness of the rents are typically very common in that yeah. class group. Um and then as you get lower to class C's, even delinquencies typically you'll see are higher. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, the class B's are I think the the late payments are typically very common in this class. Do you end up with class B, do you end up carrying uh, much in the way of uh, delinquencies from month to month? Or, I mean, do the late people typically pay the same month? They typically will end up paying in the same month. Um, Mm -hmm. And then we have had a few residents need assistance. So they'll get help from the city. Um, And even churches, local community churches will help with rental assistance as well. Mm -hmm. So those will come in um, on the given timing. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So what, uh, what other secret sauces do you have or or tools do you have in your, in your asset management book um, that, that help you really work synergistically with that, with that property manager? Yeah. So we have a very set process as well. We meet weekly with our property management team and communication is fluid. So we don't wait till the weekly calls, but texts, phone calls, emails all throughout the week. What I um, I love is we have a weekly task tracker. So obviously the reporting is very standard. You have a list of KPIs as well. Yeah. Collections, delinquencies, work orders, all of that is very standard. But we also literally just work through a checklist of items and tasks that are currently being worked on. And we timestamp it with updates. So we'll go through every single line item and say, all right, what's the update on landscaping updates or what's the update on the roof project. And the reason why it's time stamped is that is somebody misses a meeting or if I need to go back and say, huh, well, we've been working on this for six months. Like what's been the progression of it? I can go back and say, okay, well, this is what happened on this date. This was the update on this date. So it just allows for that accountability Mm -hmm. um, and tracking. So that's been a great tool for us. Yeah. Sounds like it. Um, and you know, listeners, like this is all about systems and processes. Like you can't let this stuff fall through the cracks. You could have one metric in your, in your KPI tracker that's way off and it could kill your business plan. And if you don't have your finger on the pulse with, uh, with your property manager and they don't have their finger on the pulse, um, it could, it could get ugly fast. So, um, this is all really about I mean, really, you should have systems and processes for your whole business, right? Your your broker relations, your investor relations, your marketing, your your deal finding. Um, once you're under contract, you should have a checklist of all the things that need to be done uh, with due diligence and whatnot. Third parties, like there's all kinds of of things that need to be in place. But this is so key because it's going to determine your uh, the success of your project on a long term, ongoing basis. And you gotta, you gotta be good at this. And, and, and let's, let's be real. Like all of us were probably average at best at this when we got started, because there's a lot of things that you don't know that you don't know in this space. And, uh, and so a lot of times you're going on trust with that first property manager. And then, you know, you, you meet weekly to Jenny's point, like that's absolutely 100% what you want to do. You want to have a weekly zoom meeting if you're out of state which is typically the case at least with us so um and you know we we time block a half hour a lot of times that's not really enough but um that's what we time block and that's when we cover like all the the deep dive issues but like you said jenny that conversation that communication is fluid throughout the week whether you're in a weekly meeting or not via text via emails sending pictures back and forth uh, videos, et cetera, that those are, um, those are key items to have in place. So, um, so good job and, and like way to find your niche, like way, way to find your lane in your business with vertical street and be a contribution, because I can tell you that, you know, as, as managing partner of green light, having Carl and Chelsea with their finger on the pulse with asset management really lightens my load so that I can focus on 
the things that I need to do to keep deal fl- deals flowing and keep uh, investors uh, joining and and whatnot. Um, so it's, it's so cool that you guys have a pretty clear idea, like concept of very clear, actually, of, of who's doing what and who's in charge of what. That's yeah, cool absolutely. Otherwise yeah. that's where, um, you know, messiness comes in. You definitely yeah. don't want to have a lot of friction on that standpoint. So yeah, figure out your lean. I like how you phrase that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. All right. So, um, j- just to start to kind of round things out, Jenny, you know, you've, You've been in this space now for, I mean, kind of like us, not not a real long time, but you've done a amazing, I mean, 300 million in assets under management is legit. Like that's real. And uh, <laughs> that's really great. Um, what would you say, uh, you know, to the listener that's really trying to crack the code here and get into their first deal or level up and scale up from uh, their first few deals? Uh, you know, what would you say something that you, that was really, what was really important to you in, in, in your growth, we either in mindset or in systems and processes or structure, like what would you attribute getting to 300 million uh, to? Yeah. And, you know, we tell our students this all the time is you can't do this alone. So building the right team is critical for you to accelerate fast. Yeah. So, you know, we started the company as a two man team, right. Who, you know, as a startup, you wear multiple hats. Everyone wears different, right. different hats all the time. Um, but the second that we were able to figure out, okay, how can we get help and resources? That was the pivotal moment where I said, okay, now we can only go up that much faster. Yeah. So finding the right team that complements your strengths and weaknesses, right. finding the right partners to round your team out. That is how you can start to really build momentum. Um, and then you remove yourself as a bottleneck that way also. So I that's really that. important. So that's one side. I think one attribute is building the right team that enabled us to um, find deals faster, raise capital faster, get better at asset management. And then the other component is the system and process. Without that, and I tell all of our students this too, um, you know, the first deal you'll take on, if you don't have systems and process for that first deal, you'll survive, you know, you'll get yeah. by and you'll figure it out. Yeah. But you know what happens, right? After you get the first deal, what happens? The next deal comes along and the That's next right. deal comes along. Yeah. And at that point, you'll be scrambling to build your systems and processes. So it's a lot of rework. So try yeah. to do that all that up front. It's a little mm-hmm. bit, seems a little bit daunting and, and a lot, but you'll thank yourself later so that you don't have to go back and redo anything. Yeah, that's great stuff. Really well said. Awesome. So what's the future hold for you guys? Are, do you have uh, you have goals and metrics that you're shooting for right now? You know, we um, collectively as a team got to 300 million in about 18 months or so. So great. Um, so great. I, I would say it's hard to put a number because I feel like our goals change every time we talk to each other. Um, but, you know, to be extra stretch goal, I would say, you know, in five years, we'll less than that, we'll get a billion yeah. under management. Um, nice round my, number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, my big passion area right now is just expanding our academy. Um, yep. Yep. You know, I'm sure you would say this. We wish we learned this 15 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, and got started in the sooner. So, you know, we launched an academy to help other people learn how to be syndicators and operators. Um, And really the theme of it is how to be financially free in three years or less, because each of us have been able to do that um, since starting in real estate. Nice. So listeners, it's Virtual Street uh, Ventures Multifamily Academy. Uh, if you want to Google that, you can, you can find, uh, their program there. Um, also vertical street ventures.com is their website. And, uh, that's really, uh, a good place to go. Good resource to go, uh, to learn more about vertical street and, and, uh, their Academy. And, you know, we talk all the time on the show about coaches, mentors, masterminds, uh, you know, something like this, is, this, uh, this Academy program is another way of of getting the mentorship and the guidance that you need to do deals and not make big mistakes. 
So um, is there, are there any other ways of reaching you, Jenny, that you'd like to share? Yeah, our website is perfect. Um, you can set up a call with me if you want to chat more. Um, but we're on all the social media handles, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. So come find us, reach out. We love meeting new folks. Yeah, and it's and and, and it's Jenny Gu, G-O-U. Uh, so if you want to find her on social media, uh, look her up there. And look, she's got a Calendly link. I saw it in her email signature. And whenever anybody of high level has has a Calendly link and, and is offering uh, to, to meet with you. It's always, at least on my show, it's always going to be a no strings attached sort of conversation. There's no sales pitch. People like Jenny are here purely to help. And, uh, and you know, that's why I'm here. That's why we do the show is just love helping people and love seeing people succeed and level up. So, uh, so Jenny, congratulations on all your success. Super exciting. I, I think 300 million in 18 months is so cool. Like that's a hundred million every six months. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And, uh, it's, it's super impressive. Um, and you know, tell, tell Kyle and the team that we said, hi, let us know at, at green light. If there's ever any way that we can help you guys. Um, we, you know, we'd love to be a contribution any way that we can. And, uh, and lastly, I'm just really grateful that you came on the show and shared all this wisdom with us. Wow. No, Tate, thanks for having me here and kudos to you for building such a great community here as well. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. It's, it's kind of one of the joys of my life, to be honest with you, to getting to do this podcast and, um, getting to interact with, with listeners and, 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 and getting to interact with high level guests like yourself, uh, is such a blessing. And, and, uh, I feel it's, I, I never knew this when I started the podcast, but it's like seriously the coolest thing I've ever done professionally. Like it's just, it's a creative outlet. I didn't know I needed. And it's a, it's a, a professional venture that I love doing. Um, and it's a labor of love, like, you know, directly it's, it's not monetized, but it's um, you know, it's, it, it's something that does produce good uh, results and consequences for us as a company. So um, you know, it's, it's helpful for sure, but more than anything, I just love doing it. So, um, and this has been a joyful episode for me. I really appreciate you being on and, and, uh, and, and just wish you all the best. Likewise. Thanks again, Tate. Thanks. You bet. Listeners. Thank you. We love you guys. We're so happy that you joined us. And if you're listening to the end of these episodes, like you just did, you're doing something right. You're committed. You're in that your, your mind's in the game and you're learning, you're getting that specialized knowledge base that you need. And it's not everything, right? You, you, you can't just sit through podcasts and seminars and audiobooks and everything else and, and succeed. You got to go out and do the things and take the action. However, uh, this is, if I do say so myself, I think pretty high level education and inspiration that you get on a show like this. And there's other great podcasts out there as well. So you know, give yourself a pat on the back. You're doing, you're doing some, some good stuff in the space and uh, keep going, just keep going. You know, you, you, you're, there's no failure unless you quit. Right. So good stuff. Uh, so listeners, thank you again, Jenny, thank you again. And we will check you on the next episode of the apartment gurus. Take care, everybody. This has been The Apartment Gurus with Tate Seymour. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. To contact Tate, go to www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. He loves to hear from you and thanks you for being a valued listener. Just a reminder that you are the guru. See you on the next episode of The Apartment Gurus.